Hello there. Thank you so much for joining us. This is News Channel Nebraska. My name is Eric McKay. Let's take a look at our top headlines today. An Iowa man is in jail after a weekend manhunt in northeast Nebraska followed a chase with a child in the vehicle. Stanton County authorities say 46-year-old Jason Waddell was arrested on Friday. Authorities say Waddell was initially seen driving recklessly near Pilger. His vehicle clocked traveling 118 miles per hour. He led authorities on a chase until crashing near the Stanton Wayne County line and fleeing into a cornfield. Authorities tell us a six year old boy was found at the scene who said Waddell is his father. The boy was not hurt. Authorities began a manhunt evacuating multiple farms in the area. They later found Waddell in a pickup that was reported stolen out of Wayne County and took him into custody after an exhaustive search of another cornfield using canines and drones. Waddell in jail now facing multiple charges. Good news, a missing 16-year-old girl from northeast Nebraska has been found after weeks of searching across state lines. Scribner police say they've located Azaria Sanders and they say she's safe. Saunders initially went missing on Thursday, September 5th in Scribner. Authorities didn't say where Saunders was found. The investigation remains active. Law enforcement now say they're looking into who assisted in concealing her whereabouts over the past two weeks. Firefighters made progress toward containing a more than 1,000-acre fire in northwest Nebraska. Authorities say lightning to blame for the Bronco fire that started Thursday 11 miles northwest of Crawford. The U.S. Forest Service says since then, air tankers and ground crews have been battling the fire in rough terrain and windy conditions. Forest Service officials said as of late Saturday, the fire was 72 percent contained. About 130 personnel were being used to hold the lines. In response to the fire, Governor Jim Pillen has verbally authorized a disaster declaration. A formal written proclamation is expected soon. In national news, the potential threat of government shutdown once again looming over the United States. Last week, a six-month funding extension failed to get through the House. But Speaker Mike Johnson has another proposal, and this time he may have support from Democratic lawmakers. John Lawrence has more. The U.S. government is running out of time and money simultaneously. And there will not be a shutdown. There's no way that anybody in their right mind up there could allow that to happen. House Speaker Mike Johnson wants to prevent a shutdown. Congress has an obligation to fund the government. And on Sunday, he released a plan that would fund the government until December 20th. It's a limited continuing resolution, or CR, that in addition to funding the government for the next three months, includes more money for the Secret Service. We'll have to re review it to make sure it really is a clean CR. But if it is as advertised, it is a positive step forward to solving this problem in a bipartisan way. Unlike Johnson's funding proposal that failed to get out of the House last week, this plan doesn't include the controversial SAVE Act that focuses on preventing non-citizens from voting, which is already illegal. The one thing you cannot have is a government shutdown. It would be politically beyond sh stupid for us to do that right before the election because certainly we'd get the blame. House Democratic leader Hakeem Jeffries issued a statement saying, quote, Congress is now on a bipartisan path to avoid a government shutdown that would hurt everyday Americans. I'm John Lawrence reporting. U.S. Senate candidate Dan Osborne stopped by News Channel Nebraska studios over the weekend to discuss the race for the Senate seat that's been held by Deb Fisher since 2013. Andrew Pfeiffer has more. Andrew Pfeiffer sitting here with the candidate for Senate for Nebraska, Dan Osborne. Dan, thank you so much for joining us. I did have a couple of questions for you in regards to the upcoming election and what to look forward to in November. First of all, thank you so much for joining us. Sure. Thank you for having me on. And, you know, I wanted to talk about your role as an independent. Is it more difficult running as an independent rather than a registered Democrat or Republican? And why did you decide to ultimately go as an independent? Well, yes, first of all, it is more difficult to run as an independent, not having that party machine, you know, behind you. So this is completely grassroots, just started off with uh, an idea, and it's, it's grown into something pretty special. 
but uh, I've been a registered independent uh, since the day I was able to register to vote. So that's why I'm running as an independent, because uh, that's my spirit. And going up against Deb Fisher, I mean, she's been in the Senate for a very long time. I guess what can you bring to the table that for the last few years that she hasn't been able to do? Well, I think the main difference between Senator Fisher and myself is uh, we do not take corporate donations. Uh, you know, I don't want to be beholden to corporations. I think that's part of the problem. You know, that's the broad stroke idea of this campaign, is campaign finance reform, ending Citizens United. So I don't want to be beholden to a corporation, and, and, and I'm not going to be beholden to a party boss. I want to be beholden to the people of Nebraska. I want to talk about Deb Fisher as far as the higher stages. Let's go to Washington, D.C. Donald Trump gave Deb Fisher his uh, full endorsements. I just was curious about your thoughts on that. Yes, he did. And, uh, you know, uh, it's fairly new. I haven't had a whole lot of time to think about that. But, uh, you know, it stands to reason. She's, she's the Republican incumbent. He's going to stand behind uh, Republicans because that's who he is. So, uh, you know, I'm surprised he didn't endorse me. <laughs> I love the optimism. Dan Osborne running for Senate, just actually qualified for the Senate ballot in the state of Nebraska. Dan, thank you so much for thank joining you. us. Appreciate it. Thank you. Nebraska City's the marching band competition featuring bands from schools all over southeast Nebraska. Here's a listen to some of the sights and sounds. Nebraska City ended up winning the Class A Marching Award. Ashlyn Greenwood won in Class B, and Lord Central Catholic took the trophy in Class C. Meanwhile, the city of Norfolk once again celebrated its German heritage with Oktoberfest and also answered a very important question, who has the fastest wiener dog in Northeast Nebraska? One of the many events over the two-day spectacle was the wiener dog races held along 7th Street in Norfolk, the fastest doggo this year. Poppy, see her there, a dachshund owned by Jessica and Travis Walker of Hoskins. In addition to the dog races, Oktoberfest featured the return of the beer stein holding competition, cornhole tournaments, and the addition of a 5K race along the new walking trails at Johnson Park. And this past weekend, News Channel Nebraska televised its third UNK football game of the season. Ahead of that contest, our Michael Shively profiled Loper safety Jameer Jones. And it's fourth down and goal. With Northwest Missouri State on the brink of scoring at the end of the game against UNK, Jameer Jones had one message to his team. Where else would you rather be is what I was saying to my boys. Where else would you rather be? Back against the wall, here we are. 
trying to preserve the one touchdown advantage. It turned out the safety was in a pretty good place. Pressure arrives, Runke throws, it's intercepted. The Loafers slide down at the 10, victorious. But Jones hasn't always been in the easiest place. He grew up in poverty in Maryland and attended four different high schools. He spent three years at Shaw University in North Carolina before transferring to Nebraska Kearney. I haven't had any bad experiences. These people, Nebraska nice, isn't that what they say? Nebraska nice. <laughs> the past two years, Jones has played under defensive coordinator Tim Schaffner. He's taken a, a different road to get here, and the fact that he's here and excelling makes me want to invest more in him because I know he's invested in himself. Now in Loper territory. Pressure coming. Larios gets rid of it. It's picked off. Intercepted Jameer Jones. After two games, Jones has two interceptions. The hot start is a relief for the senior in his sixth and final season of college football. Oh my gosh, it's like finding a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. It's honestly it's been great. Just like I said, you know, talking to my brothers back home who play at other universities, you know, go back home over the summer, we train. This is what we talk about. You know, this is what those hours, you know, that we put in in the dark that no one sees. This is what it's about. While continuing his pick per game pace would be great, Jones isn't focused on individual goals. He's concentrating on being a positive leader. I want to create a foundation before I leave Kearney. I want them to understand two years from now, like, look, Solo and those guys, when they were here, you know, CJ, when they were here, this is what we did, this is how we did things, so they can set the foundation for later on. I want to be remembered. I said, I really just want to be remembered. You know, great players, they make their teammates better, and that's what I want to do. That mindset has his team in a great place to start the season. In Kearney, Michael Shively, News Channel, Nebraska. And you can stay up to date with the very latest by following us online. Head to newschannelnebraska.com, click on the News tab there. You can also follow us on X, like us on Facebook and Instagram as well. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. You're watching News Channel Nebraska.